So the subject was to use human mini-brains as a new platform to identify and validate pharmaceutical compounds for the treatment of CJD. So a very ambitious program, as you see. And uh, I must say that it's the first time that we are asking for a grant uh, from the patients, and it was very specific. And I told my students and all the group that it was not neutral money there. It's not a neutral grant. Behind this, you have pain, and you have a lot of hope. And we need to be at the level of this expectation. So my students and my group had a, a high pressure about it, and uh, you will see that it was a positive pressure. So the problem that we have, as uh, Richard just told you, is that we don't have good models to understand what is happening in the human brain. You see here the size of the human brain compared to the mouse. And the mouse model, uh, of course, is a heavy model. We, you need a lot of time to have results. So for screening, it's not adapted. So we are using classically in vitro models. Uh, one classical model for uh, prion research was uh, neuroblastoma cells. And of course, it's very far away. You see the number of gaps between the experimental model and the reality. And because, because of these gaps, perhaps we we already have treatments, we already have drugs, but we are not able to recognize that they are potentially efficient because the models are not appropriate. And the new things came from this re re small revolution in the field from the work of Professor Yamanaka, who earned the Nobel Prize uh, for this work for the discovery that mature cells can be reprogrammed to become pluripotent. In other words, we all learn that adult cells have their fate and it's finished. They will always stay muscle, neuron, or whatever you want, and at the end they will die. Here he discovered that by uh, modifying four genes uh, in a very simple manner, it was possible just to reboot them and they just forget that they are adult and they become embryonic cells with all the potential to become anything a brain, a kidney, a heart, whatever you want. And uh, this incredible potential for pluripotent, uh, pluripotent cells allows you, of course, to do things in vitro and differentiate them to model disease, to create new screening and test toxicity. So people begin to envision that a human preclinical trials could be uh, done in tubes. Of course, it's still science fiction, but here you see a door on, on something completely new. And then came another revolution for us, which are the cerebral organoids that nature coined mini brains. So what I just showed you with uh, EPS, with these pluripotent cells, were uh, conducing us still to have 2D cultures, meaning flat cultures, which are still very far from the reality. Here, the uh, researchers succeeded in creating um, tissues which looked as brain. That it's the first time that somebody is able to do that. Of course, you don't have the complexity of a whole brain, there is no vascularization, but you still have uh, structures which are incredibly looking as brain. You see here that they have retinal pigmentum. Here you have a uh, va vacuum um, with a liquid fluid as in the brain. And uh, the protocol, of course it's not completely obvious, but it's quite simple. And um, they can maintain these mini brains which have uh, two to four millimeters diameter in culture up for one year. So all the first experiments were for one month of culture, but you see that there is a great potential be behind this. And all this technology can be used for brain, of course, but also for other tissues. And these much more complex tissues allow to envision that we could screen drugs uh, with these models. So we tried to set up this te technology. We put all a group on it, and they succeeded. 
First of all, they succeeded to uh, create a number of EPS cells, so by manipulating these uh, four genes. This is a transient manipulation. At the end, uh, it's eliminated. And after, you have these cells which can multiply forever. And at one moment, you can tell them, hello, it's time now for work. And so you begin to ask them to differentiate and to become mini brains. So here is the EPS, they have been characterized. So for the moment, we only began with three uh, patients which were, uh, who were normally individuals. You will see with the talk of Wen Quenzu that he did it also with uh, familial forms with mutations. That's also all the potential of the technique, of course. And we initiated also the control of all the techniques to obtain mini-brains, and you see that um, our uh, students obtain uh, splendid mini-brains, which are looking uh, exactly as what was published one year earlier by Lancaster. So we were very satisfied. And so the general strategy is this one. In vitro, we are able to obtain mini-brains, and after that, we envision the next step with an automatic acquisition, image processing, deconvolution, and 3D reconstruction of these small brains. Meaning that we don't want to obtain this complexity and, and after to lose it. So we want to explain the, the whole brain. And here's a result, for example, with two classical markers, GAP, which is for astrocytes, neurofilaments for neurons. So don't imagine that it's the head of a dog. That's really a mini brain. <laughs> but uh, you see here with the brown labeling that even if you are not specialist in the field, it's not the same labeling, even if the two slices are just uh, uh, close together. And if you go with a higher magnification, you see here a nice labeling of astrocytes, which are, is corresponding to these two small regions, and here of neurofilaments. And you see that clearly you are labeling two different populations, two different cell populations, but which are in the same area with uh, uh, incredible uh, strong intrications. So we add there the model, and that's why we ask for the grant. And here is a student, Jessica, who made the experiment of infection. So we imagined a specific protocol to take advantage of this model. So we took, uh, first of all, we took um, uh, an EPS line, uh, line from a patient methionine, methionine, methionine sorry, at codon 129. And we used as strains two strains, one of sporadic CJD, uh, methionine, methionine 1, and one for variant CJD. As you know, both of them are coming from uh, methionine patients. We decided to clarify these brain homogenates, sonications and refrigations. The idea was to have soluble, soluble infectivity. And then to contaminate, I have not told you how we are doing that, but at one moment there is what we call a matrigel, which represents connective tissue, which is everywhere in the, the body with nutri nut nutritive factors. And the, the mini brain is going to stay in this protective uh, shell during all uh, the growth. And so we imagine to, co uh, to uh, infect this uh, matrity, uh, nutritive uh, shell, so this matrigel, and uh, to put, uh, put it so in the, uh, during uh, in the, the agitation system for one month. Doing it for one month implies that as we change the culture media twice a week, uh, uh, you will have a dilution, of course, of uh, all the infectivity which will be released uh, into the me uh, culture media, and we hoped that enough infectivity would co uh, uh, go from the contaminated matrigel into the mini brain. And here are the results. So clearly, he, here it's a, a mini brain, and clearly you have a signal here, which is unexpected, was unexpected for us, because as I told you, the infection was there within the matrigel, which has been eliminated. If you go to a higher magnification, you see that you have a clear signal which is organized. And with a higher magnification, you see this nice labeling, which 
seems to be kind of ordinated. Here is another example. So once more, a labeling in only one part of the mini brain with different structures. You see here the high diversity in all the cell populations which are in the mini brain. What you have to know about a mini brain is that these organoids are able to um, reconstruct the different structures of a brain, but the whole organization will not be the one of a brain. It's quite a random distribution. And if you go at a higher magnification, you see here a kind of perhaps neu neur neural tube. We don't know exactly, that's new. And these uh, labeling, which looks a, a li little as a shading, as if the cells were trying to eliminate it. We don't know for the moment. These are pure speculation. But what we can say already is that the system is working. and. Uh, you look here on another part of the brain, you see here uh, another type of labeling on the different cell population. And the question was, is it infection? Meaning, is it a uh, new PRPRS which is generated or is it an aggregation of the PRPRS of the inoculum? So we looked earlier and we sacrificed uh, mini brains eight days uh, after infection, so nothing in the control. And you see here at the periphery a small labeling here or there. Here it was with a VCJD. And when you go at a higher magnification, once more, you have a nice labeling, less obvious than previously after one month. And so two types of explanations for as we have an increase between eight days and one month it's that it's a neosynthesis the other one is that there was still inoculum in the matrix and the cells have uh, continued to concentrate it we don't know for the moment but we have a clear demonstration that this model is incredibly powerful to study phenomena that we were not able to study before. And just to uh, finish, I would like to thank all the group who uh, deeply mobi mobilized on it. You see here with this monkey in chocolate that we can do other things, but it's not us, of course. And uh, um, I was putting this monkey as a link to other studies that we're doing in monkeys. We have just published one paper on the trans transmission of scrapey to monkey after 10 years of silent incubations. So which bring to uh, the common knowledge that perhaps scrapey is not innocuous and that the, as the absence of link between sporadic CJD and uh, pri uh, prion strains uh, as scrapey is linked once more to the fact that our models are not able to study the things properly. And of course, this mini brain model will be very useful to test all the prion strains because here we have the luck to, be, to have access to human tissues. What we are reconstructing in our dishes are uh, mini brains with human tissues. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.